Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and you guessed it, just look at this beautiful high resolution video game in front of you. We are playing, oh my god, I almost said War in the Pacific. We are playing Gary Grigsby's Eagle Day to Bombing the Reich. Uh, this is, I don't even know, what is this, our fifth episode looking at this on uh, on the channel? Uh, we have played more than that. So the game starts on August 17th. We're on August 29th. So I've played more turns than I've shown on this uh, channel. In fact, uh, the last time we looked, we were bombing Essen with 1,300 bombers. We did a fair bit of damage to Essen, but I think it was basically just like from here to the left is what you see all these destroyed hexes. Uh, we continued hitting Essen since our last stream. Uh, multiple times, time after time, time after time. And so basically after about five days of bombing with at least 300 bombers every single night, including two nights of more than a thousand bombers going at Essen, we have more or less destroyed Essen. We have de-essed Essen or Essen is a messin, as you're saying in chat, Jammin. Um, Essen is, an, is, a, is a nightmare. Each one of these little black hexes represents a square mile of the city completely destroyed it is probably as a percentage i think it's more destroyed than hamburg is despite the hamburg firestorm i think we might it didn't the game didn't tell us but we might have triggered a firestorm you can see here based on intel from three days ago the da urban damage is 69 percent i believe the recon today will show that it's over 80 percent and so you know, we we have done quite a bit of damage to us, and it's one of the biggest cities in Germany in terms of at least the industrial and, and sort of the urban sprawl. You can see there's other cities like Dusseldorf and Duisburg that are large. You've got Cologne down here, which are large, but Essen is obviously larger than that. Um, it's smaller, I think, than Frankfurt, but, um, you know, other than that, you've got a couple other ones that are bigger. Obviously, Hamburg is considerably bigger, uh, Berlin is is massive, but Essen is is a big one, and we've destroyed quite a bit of it. If we go to the campaign summary screen here, so the score when I think I think when you start the game on August seventeenth, the terror score, uh, which is I suppose the uh, the PC way of saying you know the civilians that you are killing, um, the terror score starts at eighty two thousand ish, maybe eighty one thousand, um, and we are up to ninety one thousand. 91,000. I don't really know what that, I mean. I, I know what it represents ish. I believe every thousand points, I think it is, represents a square mile of city completely destroyed. Um, so we're we've increased that quite a bit. One of those nights, one single raid at Essen caused it to go up by more than 7,000. So when you consider like all the damage that the RAF did uh, prior to the game starting, and then sort of the fact that we've increased it already by more than one eighth in just a week. That is quite a bit of damage inflicted on the Germans. Now, our industrial damage, the strategic bombing score, I had it up around 1,100 just a few days ago. My Air Force was completely exhausted, and so I had to give the, the boys a few nights off. Uh, we haven't had an 8th Air Force raid in three days. That will hopefully change today. We'll take a look at that in a moment. But that score has dropped pretty considerably. Um, we did spend that whole time we were bombing Essen. We spent basically like four or five days bombing Paris. Sorry, French, uh, French allies. You'll notice the squares are blue or the circles are blue for the urban area for the French because they're your ally. Or they're not your allies, but they're not they're not the bad guys per se. Um, but you can see here we've destroyed pretty much. We flattened every single factory around Paris. We spent, like I said, almost a week. Uh, you know, I couldn't I can't penetrate deep into Germany with escorts yet. Right. So I figured. Well, what can we what can we get fighters to to make sure our B-17s aren't totally wrecked? And effectively, the industrial targets that were within easy reach, a large ball bearing plant to the southeast of Paris um, and a couple of small like avionics factories here, a modest size engine factory here, um, a modest size um, uh, avi avionics factory here, uh, a modest size arms manufacturing facility, some oil oil tanks. A fairly large chemical works west of the city and another ball bearings plants northwest of the city and then a, um, a avionics factory as well northwest of the city. So we basically destroyed all of the industry that we that is available as targets to hit 
in Paris. We didn't do too much damage to the city. You can see there's a few yellow blobs, but generally speaking, we didn't wipe out Paris. It looks like maybe three square miles of Paris were destroyed based on three black dots, and then the rest, you know, the damage is reflective of the darker the yellow, the more damage there is. We also did destroy some power plants and uh, a rubber facility and a oil refinery between La Harve and, Lu and Rouen uh, as well. Um, we did a little bit of coastal bombing as well with some of our tactical forces, uh, destroyed some factories near Lille uh, and Bruges. Um, I was thinking maybe the next concentrated 8th Air Force strike under heavy fighter cover would be the factories in and around Ghent. You can see there's quite a few of them. And then also the factories around Antwerp, which there are also quite a few of. We can cover the, the factories in Belgium. And I feel bad. It's like, let's bomb all the occupied countries uh, but they're the ones I can hit hard with, with bombers. And we already kind of wiped out the factories around Amsterdam, but you know, at the end of the day, what are we doing? You know, with, with our, in, we did all those, bomb we did all that bombing and yet our strategic score dropped from 1100 to 600. I believe it starts the campaign with, uh, with the, uh, Americans at around 500. So, we are a little above what you start at, but, you know, the Germans are repairing these factories, right? There's factories all over Germany that are being repaired. We are not doing enough damage quickly enough. And so at the end of the day, the pressure's coming from on high. We've got to strike some targets in Germany that are bad, you know, that, that are, are meaningful. And so I've made the decision inspired by, I think it was episode four of Masters of the Air. We are going to Bremen. Uh, we're going to Bremen. It's not too deep into Germany that it is, you know, a, a guaranteed suicide raid. You know, we're not going for Berlin. We're not going for something deeper into Germany. In fact, with a more direct route, which is perhaps questionable, I think historically the Americans flew more over the North Sea than they did across the Channel and then across, you know, ne the Netherlands. But instead of diverting north, and instead of going directly more over Holland and directly into Germany, it does allow us a bit more uh, confidence in our fighter escorts. So you can see here the 303rd bomb group is the first raid going in. And if we actually take a look at these guys, these P-48s, now granted the range changes once they engage enemy fighters, the fuel consumption increases times four. So this range could dramatically decrease if the Germans intercept us early. But in theory, we can get fighters almost all the way to the edge of Bremen, right? Like just to the edge of Bremen uh, is kind of the closest we can get the fighters and then a nice coverage on the way back. So it feels like we can we can get those bombers most of the way to Bremen. And so basically what my orders are, I've got two raids of the 8th Air Force, one going for the Bremen Seabach U-Boat Fabrik, which has a, a 15 capacity. It's one of the four largest U-Boat factories in the entire map. And then the other uh, raid, So, th and this one is going at 10 o'clock. It'll be over the target by noon um, with over 200 fighter escorts. And then the other, oh, don't tell me I just canceled that. I hit, did I hit cancel? Uh, no, I think I hit cancel. Why would I? You know, it would be useful if the game had a confirmation screen. I definitely did that. Um, okay. When's the last time we saved this <laughs> stream expert? Okay. I think, I think I said, all right, let's, do, sorry guys. Um, yeah, I think I, I think I was dumb. So <laughs> one moment, no confirmation. That's a quality of life thing. I might, I might change, but like, Hey, if you're going to cancel a raid, you should probably get a, are you sure you want to do that? Uh, but let's, let's load this back up. Um, but as I was saying, we have two raids going to uh, to, S, uh, to to Bremen. The first raid, which is that sort of 250 bomber raid with about 200 fighter escorts that get you almost all the way to the target. And then we have a second slightly smaller raid. I think it's like 180 bombers, which is ironic because we're actually going for the larger target uh, with that one. And that is going toward the largest factory that produces U-boats in all of Germany. So Germany has four primary U-boat factories in this game. Uh, it had all uh, with fifth, three of them with a, f a capacity 15, one of them with a capacity 16, and two of those factories are in Bremen. There's also a capacity three at Bremen, and then just a little bit to the north, there's a capacity four at uh, Wilhelmshaven, 
and a capacity two at uh, at Emden. So you've kind of got between Emden, Wilhelmshaven, and Bremen, which are all sort of closely linked. You've got a big chunk of the German U-boat factories. Um, and then you actually also have a uh, another factory, which Bloom and Voss might actually be bigger. I don't have, I don't have any intel on that. I don't think we've ever done a recon raid near Hamburg, but Bloom and Voss, at least based on my knowledge, that that is a huge shipbuilding firm near Hamburg is there. Hamburg also has uh, some pretty big, some pretty big U-boat factories there as well. But the largest one that we know of, anyway, based on intel, is at Bremen. And so we're gonna be we're gonna be going for it. So I, I already you know showed you that first raid of the 250, and then we've got another raid here led by the 381st Bomb Group that's going to Bremen to the Deutsche Schiff U-boat Verka, which is the largest U-boat factory that we know of, to the northwest of Bremen. Now, the first raid, the 303rd, is launching at 10 o'clock. They'll be over the target by 12:02. The second group, the 381st, is launching at 11:30, so an hour and a half later, and will be over the target at 1:30 or 1331. The second group does not have a strong fighter coverage. It is also a small, smaller bomber formation. So we may lose heavy forces there. We've only got about 90 fighter escorts in the second raid. They're all spitfires, but they can make it a you know pretty darn close as well to the to the target. You've got at least one group of 20 that can make it very close to the actual bomb run. Uh, and then also on the way out, the logic with only having 80 fighters on the second leg of the of the raid, the second raid, is that, hey, first raid's going to go in. They're going to draw a bunch of German fighters up. The Germans are going to be rearming and refueling, and the odds of them being able to do all of that and get back up to altitude in less than an hour and a half, pretty low, I hope. So that's the logic. That's the coordination is the first raid should take the brunt of it with the bulk of the fighter coverage. The second raid should hopefully come in with a less dicey situation, if we will. Um, so those are the two primary daylight raids. I also do have Bremen's city center and the marshalling yards set as a secondary target. That is because today is not a good day for weather. So this is basically a max effort for the 8th Air Force. However, uh, cloud covers 48%, so very good chance that our bombers are going to get to the U-boat facilities and not be able to see anything. I believe, based on my reading of the rules, I haven't seen this borne out a ton, but based on my reading of the rules, if the bomber formation has radar guidance, they will drop on radar uh, once they, you know, if they can't see the target with uh, with radar. So my hope is that if they can't hit the U-boat factories, they'll divert to the city center, to the marshalling yards, and destroy the rail facilities there. It may also cause some urban damage, which could result in some terror points, uh, but we'll see. In addition to that, don't hit cancel, don't hit cancel, don't hit cancel, we have a big RAF night. Not a huge RAF night, but a fairly big RAF night. We've got 406 bombers also going to Bremen. I figured, you know, let's combine bomber offensive this to the max. So the bombers are going to hit the factories near Bremen. The British bombers, all Lancasters, so all big boys, all modern big boys, over 400 Lancasters, the prime bombing formations of the of the RAF are going to hit Bremen's city center that night. Um, and in addition to that, we also have another RAF raid, a smaller one uh, that is going to hit Emden, I think, right? Yes. How many bombers? Oh, yeah. So we got 193 bombers. The less good uh, RAF bombers, uh, we've got Sterlings, Halifaxes, and a few Lancasters are going to hit Emden, which is already 60% destroyed, but it's a tiny little city, so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have that much to destroy. But, you know, we got we can do more damage. We can set more fires. We can we can get a little more terror score by hitting Emden. Um, so anyway. Um also, that being said, we have one other formation that is going to be going, I believe. Uh, I think we have some bombers that are also going back to Essen, the city that we flattened mostly to just draw the Germans off. So earlier in the night, I'm kind of going backwards in terms of the timing of this, but earlier in the night, uh, kind of as soon as the sun sets, we've got a small raid going to Emden, 28 mosquitoes. So these guys are going to be fast. They're going to get in, get out before they do too much damage. But the thought is they're going to hit, they're going to hit um, Essen and the Germans are going to think, and I don't know if the AI really does this, if it really looks at patterns or not, but hopefully the ideas are going to think, hey, they're coming for Emden again, get all the relevant fighters up there, 
intercept them. And then by the time the later raids come, which are, you know, a full, well, not the takeoff time, but the over target time is 2021. By the time we're hitting Bremen, that's going to be two hours later. So hopefully the initial sort of scramble of fighters that get up are going to have to land, refuel, rearm. And at least if they do intercept the Bremen raid, they will be more tired. Um, and then the uh, the Emden raid will come in even later at 022, so an hour and a half after the Bremen raid begins to hit Bremen. So Emden, you know, the German, these are the weaker bombers, but hopefully by the time they hit Emden, those those German fighters, they may have throw, flown three missions or two missions by now, and they should be they should be worn out. That's the theory anyway. We will see how it works in practice. I thought I had a night interdiction raid to, um, to uh, Essen also. Why not? Here we go. So we also have six jamming aircraft going to Essen as well with the mosquitoes. So the mosquitoes are going to go in. There's only 28 of them, but there's also going to be six RCM mosquitoes, which are going to be dropping chaff and all these other sort of radar guiding, you know, radar um, confusing things. So they're going to go into Essen as well. So while there's only 28 or actually 34 total aircraft heading to Essen tonight, hopefully the, the RCM aircraft are going to make it look like it's a much larger aircraft because the radar is going to pick up all those pieces of aluminum that are falling from the sky. The radar is going to think that's a big raid, scramble everyone there first. So hopefully that that draws, again, more Germans away from the, the potential raid on Bremen. I don't know, you know, Emden and Essen and, and Bremen are pretty far away from each other. So we may not draw a ton of fighters. Like, I don't know that it's that's halfway across Germany. I don't know how long, how wide the radius is for German night fighters. But we'll see. So there's that. Additionally, I do want to plan a couple more raids real quick here uh, before we actually start the replay. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to send um, a raid in toward Hanover, uh, which is going to be a RCM strike. Not really a raid, but an RCM flight. These guys are pretty well rested again because I haven't really flown much in the last two days. Got to get them above 3,000 feet probably. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and send a six RCM aircraft to Hanover, that's certainly closer to Bremen, so it's going to look to the Germans like there's a raid going somewhere other than Bremen, and so that's, you know, hopefully that will draw them away or at least confuse any intercept attempt of the formation there. They'll arrive over target at around the same time, so that should uh, prevent, hopefully, the Germans from being like, hey, they're definitely centering on Bremen. They'll know once the bombs start falling, but before the bombs start falling, it should hopefully uh, throw the Germans off. And then, you know, can we get a can we get an RCM strike to Berlin? I don't know if we can. It'd be great if we could. We can. So we'll send some Halifaxes to Berlin on an RCM strike. Again, to confuse the Germans. Halifaxes can't even make it to 20,000 feet, but they'll do that. And then we will also send another strike here to Hamburg. Again, just to do everything we can to confuse the Germans. Let's not put them over the Emden area, though, just to be sure. Uh, and we'll do that with some more RCMs. So we're going to really tax out our uh, radar countermeasures. I don't want my my uh, aircraft getting shot to pieces. And then we're also just going to do an auto plan of the uh, bomber command. And we're going to do intruders. So we're going to plot some intruders to also add that. So we'll send some, looks like we're going to send, I don't know, 10, maybe a little more than 10 intruders to some different uh, night airfields, maybe they'll intercept some enemy aircraft landing or taking off or just add some general confusion to the situation. Now, before we get going here, we also do just want to kind of highlight the fact that there is stuff going on elsewhere too. So we've got a pretty big day in Italy. Uh, we are still operating under the avalanche rules, which basically mean you've got to hit airfields, got to hit marshalling yards, got to hit units to support the eventual invasion of Italy, which is going to start soon. So we've got raids going for the Palazzi airfield, all the Fabrizi airfield, and the Vibo airfield. We also have some troops going after the 29th Panzer Grenadiers. I have synchronized strikes on the uh, Batapalia rail junction, the Salerno rail junction, uh, and then the... Littoria rail junction. So we've got bombers going into all of those marshalling yards uh, to slow the ability of the Germans to redeploy their forces. Uh, and then we also have a very small raid going in on the Benit patrol uh, tanks. 
um, to, uh, to, you know, hopefully destroy some of those oil production facilities. Got a fair bit of recon going on as well, uh, but we'll see how that all plays out. I think that's, I think the day is going to start down there. With that being said, that's been enough of me rambling about this. Why don't we actually start the replay? I know the replays on this game take a good long while. Um, and, you know, everybody knows this is the most exciting game ever made, devised to man. So first things first, let's take a real quick look at the score to see how we do for the turn. Um, I'm going to snap quick, you know, do the boomer thing. And I'm going to be like, oh, let's get, my, let's get my camera out. Let's go ahead and take a picture with it, with my camera. And uh, now I'll have an actual, you know, I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> didn't take a screenshot. I got, got a photo of the, uh, of the score here. And, uh, you know, whatever. I'm not sharing with anyone, so what do you care? Let's go ahead and end the phase, and we'll get our boys flying. Again, there's a fair chance this whole Bremen thing blows up in our face, or, or, or missions don't even fly, uh, because th the overcast is very heavy. Also, I didn't say it, but we are flying sweeps over a couple of airfields. Steinbeck Airfield, uh, where we know that there's 20 enemy fighters, or we think there's 20 enemy fighters. Nordhorn Airfield, where we think there's 40 enemy fighters. We're flying a few daytime fighter sweeps as well. We're giving most of the tactical tactical air force the day off um, because I just don't know that it's, you know, with 40% cloud cover, might as well give them the day off. Um, and then we also, one other thing, why am I bombing the U-boat factories? They don't directly contribute to destroying the, the Luftwaffe. I'm just, I'm attacking them because you get strategic bombing points for destroying U-boat factories. If you do not occasionally, which we have not yet, if you do not occasionally bomb U-boat factories, what will happen is you will get a directive in the same way that we have a directive in Italy where we have to attack certain targets, which give me no points toward victory. You will occasionally get directives to say attack U-boat pens because, you know, the British are like, hey, stop letting them sink our subs, destroy those U-boats. So I'm trying to preempt being forced to bomb those U-boat pens by bombing these, these factories because at least I get some credit for it. Hey, Tortuga, how you doing? All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's go. The clock is, ru the clock is running. Are you ready? We're just watching the squares, by the way. I don't, I don't have the actual images. You know, we could, we could be like, hey, look at the actual airplanes. Don't these look cool? But we're not doing that. We're, we're looking at this, at the squares because the game's performance is so much better. It is so much faster. Oh, wow. It's a pretty cloudy data over Italy, too. I thought it said that the cloud cover was like 17% over Italy, so it should mostly be clear. It looks like most of the, the mainland area is clear. Also, the uh, cloud covers at 4,000 feet. I've got most of my recon flights coming in below that. So usually I like to fly my recon planes down on the deck. It seems to yield better results. Although certainly you, you take more casualties. Podcast hype! Just a few more days. It's only two months late. <laughs> uh, well, not the podcast. We didn't record it two months ago, but the topic is two months late. Is it edited? It is. It is in process. Yes, we got recount over Essen. I will probably post it on Saturday. I've had some past turnaround. I don't, I've been turning them around more quickly than previously. Oh, no. Look at that heavy cloud cover over, uh, over Bremen. We have no up-to-date intel over Bremen, by the way. So these recon planes are flying over Bremen, trying to get a sight of what we're going to be bombing later in the day so they can give pictures to the briefers. And uh, okay, there we go. Later in the day, it looks like the cloud cloud cover has started to clear over Bremen, at least temporarily. These raid, th this recon over us, it doesn't really matter. We already got a good picture of Essen, I think. Let's actually take a look quick here. Let's pause for a sec. So uh, what time is it anyway? 8.15? My raids in Italy are going to kick off at around 9. Let's get rid of these clouds. Essen, where are you? There you go. Recon zero days, huh? I thought we had more than 69% damage, but maybe that hasn't updated yet. It will update. I believe it's higher than that. 
All right, so we've got fighters uh, strafing some of these fields now. So, you know, like I said, the uh, raids are going to kick off in Italy. I think we pretty much had four targets all coordinated to hit at 9.06 exactly. So we're trying to bomb several different airfields. We don't really know for sure if the enemy still has fighters there. My intel is a little out of date on some of these. So uh, we'll see if we get any credit for destroying anything on the ground. So far, we're only seeing 20 millimeter quad AA mounts destroyed. Not exactly the most reassuring thing. Two Spitfires destroyed by flak. There's a reason the British didn't like to do low altitude fighter sweeps over fighter bases. They thought it was more useful to try and draw the Luftwaffe, especially at this point in the war, up into dogfights. They thought that was a much better way to destroy the Luftwaffe than attacking the airplane on the ground. That would change in 44 as you started seeing the emergence of long range drop tanks and escorts, but... You know, flak is always a major problem, uh, and you can see we have lost quite a few aircraft to flak, uh, you know, it, not just in this turn, but in other turns. Now, you can see there are still enemy aircraft on the ground there. We just got a F-190 destroyed on the ground, F-190 damaged on the ground, etc., a couple of our E-2002s on the ground. So the Germans still have aircraft here. Looked like the first raid of the day, I didn't see anything destroyed on the ground, so they may have moved some of their aircraft around. Um, but in any event, how did they do the weather historical random or fancy algorithm Tortuga? I don't know for sure. I haven't seen them say, but my assumption, I feel like a lot of times you see games nowadays be like, especially in, in like, uh, ultimate, ultimate, uh, American revolution claims this. They're like the weather in these regions is based on the historical forecast for given days, which maybe that's true. I think that's one of the games that said that it's definitely common in a lot of games to make that claim nowadays. I don't think anything made 30 years ago was doing that. That being said, I mean, they certainly looked at weather at different times in given years and they said like, Hey, the fall in this period, they probably just made a percentage guess, right? There's a 30% chance at this time of year that there would be this weather or weather on this day. There's a 30% chance that this, you know, so that's, that's my assumption on how they did the weather. I, you know, they're not looking at like, I highly doubt they're looking at satellite or, you know, weather reports. Well, I say satellite, but weather reports from those specific days to recreate exactly that. All right. So here we've got our other raids in Italy going. We have a later day in Northern Europe, but in Italy, we had an earlier start. Most of our bombing raids uh, we had like a 9.10 to 9.20 start on the raids on some of the ground forces and then the air the air bases in the south. And then about an hour later, we hit the marshalling yards further north. Um, so you can see here we've got some Kitty Hawks going in on the 26 Panzers. You can see we're destroying some enemy targets there on the ground, some AFVs, other things like that. Obviously, the objective is to weaken these ground units as much as possible before the invasion. We've got some uh, British Boston 3s coming in. We're taking some damage here. We've, we've destroyed 18 enemy aircraft on the ground. Looks like the enemy did scramble against some of our raids here. Um, these guys are coming a little bit lower altitude. My Commonwealth boys and Kitty Hawks and Spitfire 5s have not done well lately against uh, against Axis forces. I think we had one day, I don't think I showed it on stream, where we lost like 20 Spitfires. It was a bad day. Um, apparently, we also have P-38s getting bounced. Oh, no. Those guys are, should be on top cover. I thought I had them. I didn't have them up like 5,000 feet above the bombers, but I think I set them to two. The Italians are doing much better in the last few days, though, in their air combat than they had been doing. P-38 seems so bad. I mean, I know it's the H model and the later models had like the maneuvering flaps and other things like that that made them better. But oh my God, they seem just not good. The P-47 is great, by the way. The P-38, I want to love it. I feel like the P-38 is such an iconic aircraft that like you just want to love it. Just doesn't perform. I can see why the book I was just reading was like, yeah, P-38, not very well liked. Uh, at least by high command. Like everybody was like, yeah, this aircraft sucks. At least in terms of bomber escort. Despite the fact that it had pretty good range. All right, our B-26 is going in on the marshalling yards. It's after 10 o'clock now. So like I said, sort of the last string of raids going through Italy right about now. Hey, Drevin. 
even if it's a box instead of plane sprites. Yeah, the box is just Draven. It, I, you know, I'm sure from a viewer perspective, you would rather see this. But it performs so much better like this. The game just runs so much faster. Uh, yeah, the highest ace uh, was Richard. Was it Richard Bong? I can't remember his first name. From Wisconsin. Yeah. You can go to Bong National Park. People love to make getting high jokes about it uh, in, uh, in the southern Wisconsin. But, uh, but yeah, I, uh, every time we go to my grandparents growing up, we'd always go right by that park. It's a, it's not like a small park, by the way. It's like an, it's basically like an, like a state forest. It's huge. Um, but yeah, um, highest scoring ace P38, P38 really white, well liked in the Pacific one because it had very good range. You know, obviously the Pacific was sort of a scenario where you had a lot of distance between bases, um, and at a lot, the altitudes that combat took place in the Pacific were lower. The P-38 is sort of notorious for being much better at low altitudes than it was at high. Um, you know, I believe the reason the P-38 struggled in bomber escort is it had a single stage uh, turbocharger, which basically meant that it did have a turbocharger, but it was not good. Like a single stage turbocharger basically meant like if it was under 15,000 feet, it would perform very well. If it was above 15,000 feet, you know, it, it was not a very good performing aircraft. You needed multi-stage turbochargers, uh, which came typically later. But it's kind of interesting when you think about it, because like the Eastern Front in World War II in Europe, uh, sort of well known for being a lot more sort of tactical type airplane operations, less strategic and altitudes tended to be much lower. Um, you know, you didn't have anyone saying we can drop a bomb into a pickle barrel at 30,000 feet or whatever the claim of the Norden bomb site was. Um, you also had, you had a lot of flack, but it wasn't like the, the ground was so much wide, like the, the front was so much larger that you probably couldn't get the same concentration of anti-aircraft guns as you could in Northern Europe. Um, and so, you know, you didn't necessarily have to fly as high. Um, but, uh. You know, the, so you saw lower altitudes, and I kind of feel like that same dichotomy existed in the Pacific where you tended to see lower altitudes as well, perhaps with the exception of some of the B-29 stuff going on. But, um, you know, you didn't see you didn't see bombers dropping bombs on islands at 30,000 feet. There was, you know, you get lower, you get better accuracy generally. This is not the best turn. We are inflicting quite a few casualties on the enemy as well, but they are shooting up a number of our raids here. The A-36 is getting shot up pretty bad. Uh, we saw pretty large formations of BF-109s tearing into B-17s near Naples. Uh, they're chasing our A-36 Apache raids, which are basically ground variant uh, early model P-51s out. We had we had hit Latoria marshalling yard. I had hoped that those planes would come in at low altitude and you know, do a good job against the enemy and before the enemy could respond. But it seems like they did they did get in there. I actually did adjust the formation a little bit so that it would come in uh, in a different angle so the enemy radar coverage wouldn't get us till we were almost to the target, um, almost just right off, off the coast. But didn't seem like that made a huge difference in terms of our aircraft getting destroyed. Interesting that that raid got in on the Hermann Goering division there without any German fighters going for it. They really wanted to focus on these other raids. 11. Uh, we are destroying some Italian aircraft here, but uh, they are they're they're really taking taking these guys to the woodshed a bit. Uh, B25s hitting the uh, the German infantry here on the southern tip near Consanza. Uh, Panzer Grenadier troops. B25s don't seem very accurate. The B26 to me seems like it's a very accurate aircraft and destroys a lot of enemy ground units or a lot of enemy aircraft on the airfield. B-25s don't seem to do that great, although I, now that I say that, this particular group of B-25s destroying a number of AFVs, infantry, and even fortifications. So that that group, as soon as I started maligning the B-25, that group of B-25s doing work. I'm more interested in Northern Europe, uh, but that will things will kick over there to see how that goes here in a little bit. You know, at the end of the day, all this stuff over Italy is not really relevant to the score, the way the game scores. Um, it is relevant in the sense that if you damage the enemy badly enough in the field, 
It can result in Italy being overrun more quickly, which can directly influence the score. But like bombing any of these individual things doesn't drive the score all that well. Um, and so like bombing factories directly gives you points as opposed to sort of indirectly, you know, possibly helping. You're absolutely right. Cliche. They heard me talking about them. It's, it's like any day with sports, right? You say something about a sports team and then they immediately sort of prove you wrong, I guess. Uh, that's another recon flight. I think, uh, eight BF 109s attacking the Baltimore fives on the way out or those are BF 110s actually. Baltimore showed that BF-110. What's what? Hey, there you go. Escorts. Do something. Just damage an enemy fighter. Okay. Let my A-36s go. You just joined the stream. This is bombing the Reich, hillbilly. So you may say, why are we watching squares? They're actually planes. But the game runs better when you look at it in square view. So we're running that. We'll probably run two turns tonight. So, BF-110 destroyed. All right, so we're still doing more recon flights. Looks like, did we, please tell me we got some recon over those. Stop damaging. The P-38s are good aircraft. Stop being mean to them. Did we, have we, so still no intel on those. All right, let's do this. Let's stop for a second. I want to go Back to Northern Europe. Actually, get rid of that. Okay, so our bombers are flying, by the way. Apparently, I would have never known that based on all the intel coming out of uh, out of Italy. But it looks like our B-17s are over sort of this little, the little peninsula in Holland. We got our fighter escorts with them, but it uh, does look like the Germans have already intercepted. We got four Focke-Wolfs coming in this way. I can't really see what this group is. We got... Three F-190s over here. 11 109 G5s. One of... We had some... We had some fighter sweeps that were supposed to be running over some of those German airfields, but you can see there are 33 BF-110s there. The Germans are coming for us. 35 BF-109 G5s. This is going to be 36 D... How many D-520s do they have? I swear we've shot down like 40 of them. I don't think they operated that many. Um, whoops. So these guys, did we ever get good intel on this factory here? Zero days. Okay, so we got intel on that U-boat factory and that factory and downtown. Good. Meanwhile, do we ever get an update on Essence? Still just 69 damage? I don't believe that. I think it was higher than that. Anyway, I wish there was a way you could lock onto a specific raid and just follow them because I don't care about all this stuff happening in the south. Like... I want to follow what's happening up north. And instead, I still got to watch these German aircraft. What the hell's a SAI 207? I'm glad we shot it down, but. All right, 37, first strike coming in on the bomber formation. 37 BF 109s attacking our escort, actually. They damaged two of them, uh, they didn't shoot any of them down. Losses are about equal, but remember about 18 of the enemy aircraft were destroyed on the ground. So in terms of aircraft destroyed so far, uh, the Germans definitely have killed more pilots of ours. 37 more BF-109s engaging our P-47s. P-47s got the better of that engagement, damaging one enemy aircraft without loss. So the P-47s doing good work. Unlike the P-37s or P-38s, these P-47s damaging enemy fighters at greater frequency than they are themselves being damaged. 19 BF 110Gs firing rockets. Three B-17s damaged by the rockets. 32 BF 109Gs make it into the formation, starting to damage the formation. So we are near Assen. Three BF 109s destroyed. Hell yeah, brothers. Get on them, gunners. But we are near Assen, and the, enemies, the enemy fighters have broken into the bomber formation. You can see pretty clearly... It does look like the formation at the moment is holding together and actually damaging quite a few of these enemy escorts that are breaking in, but the formation will likely start coming apart, and we are still a ways away from Bremen. What's the cloud cover look like? Oh, no. <laughs> we're going to fly all the way here, and we're not going to be able to see the target. That's great. Three BF-110s destroyed. 
Oh boy. Um. Yeah, I know that they used the D520. I guess I assumed by 43, late 43, they didn't still have that many of them that were being used. But these German fighters are getting shot up pretty decent. They're coming in in strong formations, though. Four B, B-17s damaged. Our Thunderbolts are still there. They're still hanging in there. Just got, got a 109 there. Now they're getting bounced. That might have been the first Thunderbolt I remember seeing saying it was shot down. Another 520 destroyed. I thought I have some fighter sweeps coming in at some point. I think we've got another set of fighters coming in somewhere. I'm not sure if these guys are heading to join the bomber formation, but there's 33 P-47s back here near Sneak or if they're heading home. Hey, 20 Spitfires bounced and two F-190s destroyed. So further west here near Alkmar, these might be our replacement Spitfires, but at the very six B-17s damaged by rockets again. One destroyed. Ugh. Okay, so this is not pretty. We could speed things up a little bit, I guess. It is pretty slow here with all of these German aircraft swarming us. But... I kind of just want to get like a sense of how things are going. And I think if I turn the replay up, then you feel like the replay is longer than the planning phase. Um, no, but that's just because I usually don't show the whole planning phase on stream. It, the replay in this game does take a good long while. Like there's probably a better way to do it where you do it in chunks. Like first leg of the raid. Here's what happened. Second leg of the raid. Here's what happened over the target. Here's what happened. Like you could, you could probably do that and, you know, not have to follow the entire minute by minute course of the bombers across, across Germany. Um, there's definitely a way to do that. These rockets are pretty damn accurate. I don't think that, uh, that they would have really quite uh, hit at the rate that they're hitting. But Hey, we got some P 47s in there shot down another enemy aircraft. My main concern at this point is we are seeing a lot of bombers damaged. And this formation, as it comes apart, those bombers are going to be very vulnerable. You need some level of, of detail, Tortuga. Like, I understand, oh, you can you could just give a summary at the end of the mission too, right? But, like, then you'd have no idea what went well. Like, I do think you need to know at different points in the mission what's happening if you're making a game about the strategic air war if it was just like a post battle summary that didn't tell you anything about what happened where it would just be really much the player would have no idea like what do i need to do differently but so we have 250 bombers going in remember i swear there's at least 30 or 40 that are already probably badly damaged uh is, it, is the weather getting any better over Bremen? Doesn't look like it. We also have the option of making the messages more detailed. So we can turn it up to two. I don't know what this does. I'm just trying to see if what, what additional level of detail this will provide. Tell them to lie, dive below. Well, the cloud cover goes down to 800 feet PBU. So if you look down here, overcast 800 feet to 4,600 feet. So that might not be great. <laughs> oh my God. They are really hitting us hard. Maybe I shouldn't have. So I, what I will say is we haven't bombed the Germans in three or four days. So while our bombers are nice and rested and well equipped, the German fighters are too. What is three? I know there's different levels of detail. The one tens are taking a good a good amount of damage from uh, I guess from our gunners. They probably should be staying out of range because they're slow relative to one oh nines. I think a lot of times the one tens would stay out of range of the of the gunners on the B seventeens and just lob rockets into the formation. Oh, whoops. Crap. Well, I think we're over the target or just about there. 
did we hit? I didn't, I wasn't even paying attention to, did we already get there? No, we're still on the way in, I think. 100% obscured. Switching to secondary targets. Okay. So they got to the factory. They couldn't drop on it because the weather was too bad. Oh, my God. Three more destroyed. Look at these numbers, by the way. It looks like I think our numbers have gone up by like 15 bombers since I quickly you did that warp speed. This is going to be a rough raid. Maybe not quite Schweinfurt level. Could be, though. We'll see. Let's see if they even bomb the secondary target. I have not gotten confirmation on if they actually drop on radar. It's 100% obscured. Unable to locate target. Just bomb on radar. You guys have radar. If you go all the way and you don't even drop your bombs, I'm going to be pissed. They didn't drop. What the fuck? The game says if they have radar guidance, they will drop. They have radar guidance. Oh. Well, that's annoying. All right, we're going to speed things up a little bit. Bloody day to no purpose finish. They got over the target and they didn't even drop their damn bombs. Pieces of shit. Uh, we got some fighter sweeps going out. I, I hoped that I would get some fighters getting to these airfields as the Germans were landing. I don't know that'll happen. All right, we switched to time zero. Bombers are on the way out. A lot of damage bombers going down. We do have additional fighters that are joining the, the formations on the way back. So maybe they will intercept some German fighters, but you can see these losses are crazy. Second raid, I think, is coming in much, I, I believe, anyway. Who knows? There don't look to be as many German fighters on the second raid, at least at the moment. Maybe they're going to join afterwards. There's a chance they could see. Target's visible. Hell yeah, brother. Drop them bombs. At least the second raid's getting in. Looks like the bulk of the formation made it in. All these are dropping with 20, 30-plus bombers. So there's German fighters are definitely scrambling to hit our bombers, but they appear to be on the way. They're going to hit them on the way out as opposed to the way in. So I am hoping that these U-boat works are pretty badly destroyed. We'll see how many we lose on the second leg. I'm worried we lost like 40 out of 250. That might have been Schweinfurt level bad on the inbound route. My points! <laughs> I don't know that I'm too worried about points for the aircraft that are being shot down, but we do have some fighters coming out to join them, don't we? There's some Spitfires here. 15 Spitfires are coming in. There's like 150 fighters around these bombers. We've got like 15 jolly, jolly old Spitfires flying in like, hey, can we help? Let's see if they do anything. At least you won't have to do two legs where, like, the B-17 was damaged on the way out in and then has to fight its way out. They're getting damaged on the way out, and maybe they can limp home. They'll either raise morale finish or they'll get misidentified by the bombers as, as enemy fighters and they'll get shot at. I don't know that the game accounts for that. It does have friendly fire for flak, though, so maybe it does. Hey, Spitfires, you going to do anything? Attacking enemy fighters with four Spitfires. One BF-109 destroyed. Good job. Got one. Okay. Claiming 48 damage on the second factory, I think, is what Intel claims. First factory was at, set, was at like seven damage to start. We didn't drop any bombs on it. The second factory is just shy of 50, so a decent amount of damage, but certainly not shut down or anything. Okay. We're into the nighttime phase. All right, so we got our we got our uh, formations going out. All right, let's slow things up a little bit. So we, remember, we got our 
RCM aircraft heading south of the target. We got some night interdiction raids going out. We're bombing Bremen with Lancasters, 400 of them. Target is obscured. Drop on radar. It doesn't matter. Bombs falling in the Bremen area. Good job, boys. Let's level that city, shall we? Okay, here you go. You see the little red dots? Those are fires. Fires are good. Keep hitting it. Keep at it, boys. One Lancaster destroyed by Flak. I think that's our first bomber that was lost. So far, anyway. I don't see a whole lot of German interceptors around the formation yet. A BF-110 was just destroyed. Oh, there we go. JU-88 attacking and damaging a Lancaster. I didn't really send any fighters up to follow the stream. Maybe that's a mistake. But you can see here a decent amount of fire. Actually, quite a bit of fire spread out all through the Bremen area. So we're doing, I think, pretty good damage to the city right now by the looks of it. Uh, 23 Lancasters. I think you got lost. You are way south of Bremen. Bombs falling in Bremen area. So we got a little bit of creep back going. You can see this red circle where they're dropping is now on the very northern edge of the city. So the way this usually works is you start bombing in one area and then the, the, the fires and bombs sort of follow the, uh, the formation on the way away from, you know, in the direction that the formations are flying. There's another lane caster that just went down. So it looks like to me we're doing oh, bombing north of the city, so nowhere near the target. Falling in the sea back area, okay. What was that? What is the sea back area? Is that is that a factory? Did they just accidentally bomb the uh other U-boat factory? They did. Ha! Huh? Okay. They you can damage British bombers can damage industrial facilities, so maybe they just did more damage than the B-17s did. Good job, boys. You hit those factories. Actually, earlier, one of our previous episodes, we bombed the Pinamunda area, I remember. These mosquitoes were supposed to hit previous. Why are they bombing so late? They were supposed to hit like two hours before. I think the timing of my raids got all messed up. Anyway, it looks like the Bremen area is getting hit pretty hard. We'll go ahead and fast forward. I don't think we need to see more of this. I don't know if anybody ended up hitting Emden. I think that was later. Okay. Yep. Actually bombing Halifaxes are hitting or hitting Emden. Looks like Emden is pretty good. Pretty good. It's burning. You can see almost the entire city here is covered by red hexes. Emden will no longer exist, boys. The three hexes that are not burning are already completely destroyed. So sorry, Emden. You're gone. We'll have to send recon up tomorrow to see how well the raids did. I don't know that the terror is going to go up too high. Emden's small. And I don't know how many hexes we completely destroyed in Bremen that weren't already. You can see a lot of yellow. Yellow represents damage. The darker the yellow, the more the damage. But unless you got one of those little black squares, I don't know how many points you really get for it. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, speed things along a little bit here. The bad thing of that first raid going so poorly for us now is it, we had a, it was a bad weather day. They didn't drop. And now, you know, if we get a good weather day, the the, the B-17s are, one, going to be tired. The morale is going to be in the tank. And, you know, they're not going to want to fly again. So we'll have to see what happens here. I don't even know. You know, hopefully Bucky Egan didn't get shot down over Bremen. If he did, it's going to be all historical. But, yeah, let's take a look at losses here. So, first off, let's take a look at the night bombing results. Okay, so SN Intel, based on the photos that were developed, SN is 88% destroyed. I would say I'm pretty comfortable moving on from SN. SN no longer exists. It's, a, it's, it's just a pile of rubble. 88% destroyed. Good job, boys.
Bremen will have to send some uh, some photo reconnaissance to see how it is. It's I don't think it's anywhere near eighty percent, but you can see we definitely did you know destroy some of it. Emden appears to be gone pretty much. It was at sixty three percent before the raid. There might only be two hexes in Essen that even exist anymore. So Essen Essen is gone. Now, if we are to take a look at the actual score before we look at the individual raids, we went into the day with 91,576 terror points. We were up to 93,489. Every time you get to another 10,000, your terror score goes up by one. So right now we're at nine. You need a total between industry, air superiority, and terror of 90, I believe, to win. So we're a ways away from there, but we've gone up one since the start of the game. As a nice little day there from a terror perspective. Lancaster's got work done. Um, 2,000 more terror points awarded. Strategic bombing is sitting at 560 or 651. Went up by about 40, so not a very good day. I mean, we kind of treaded water as they repaired other factories and things like that. We did a little bit of damage. We lost 127 aircraft. We'll dig into that in more detail, but 67 of those were B-17 Flying Fortresses. So that was basically Black Thursday. Uh, that was a bad day. 60 pilots KIA, 60 pilots WIA, 25 pilots, or sorry, 25 pilots WIA, 60 pilots MIA. So we lost 120 pilots, either killed or captured. The enemy lost 86 aircraft. That's definitely a lot, especially for the Luftwaffe, uh, but only 20, only 19 pilots KIA and 59 temporarily wounded. Um, their largest aircraft loss was the BF-109 G6. They lost 19 of them. That would be kind of what you would expect. That's their workhorse. What I will say is their ready aircraft plummeted. So did ours, but to a lesser extent. Ours went from like 50, I want to say we had 5,800 ready aircraft before today. Uh, we had 5,500 aircraft. So we lost about 500 aircraft from being ready to fly. 120 of them shot down. Uh, another 100, 380 uh, temporarily out of action. The Germans dropped from 3,400 aircraft ready to fly to 2,800. So pretty considerable reduction in their flyable force. The problem is with as many B-17s as we lost today, the ability to penetrate deeply tomorrow pretty in question we look at actual after action reports 56 of 257 bombers were lost in the initial raid on bremen to do no damage they dropped no bombs they were awarded no points they lost 56 out of 256 bombers they lost a fifth of the more than a fifth of the entire formation dear god not quite, what did they lose at Schweinfurt? 600 of 300-ish, 60 of 300. So about the same as Schweinfurt. Uh, but yeah, bad day. Presumably also a lot more damaged. We lost nine friendly fighters. We did shoot down 35 intercepting aircraft. So there's a fair chunk of aircraft shot down. The second raid at Tord Bremen did much better. They lost 117th. They lost 10 of 178 aircraft. Still 100 men but not anywhere near as bad. Enemy only lost six fighters on that second raid. We lost three interceptors. The Bremen raid lost seven of 406 aircraft, so that was a very effective raid. Not only uh, did the, the Lancasters seem to do damage, which we'll look at the intel, but the losses were not bad at all. You know, that was a, that was, that was a dream scenario for that raid. The Emden raid also only three out of 193 bombers, Really good, uh, you know, chances there for those guys to potentially fly again tonight. We'll see what the maintenance looks like, but I can see why the ready aircraft didn't drop too badly. It doesn't look like we lost much outside of uh, outside of those two raids to Bremen. We did lose eight out of uh, out of sixty four bombers heading to Latoro. Those were the A thirty sixes. So you can see, like Southern Italy, rail yards getting shredded. Doing good job there. Just would rather be bombing factories a little bit. But with that being said, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this episode up here. Uh, my schedule for the week got thrown off a bit by still being sick. I think you can still hear it in my voice. Uh, but I'm hoping to live stream again tonight. Or not again, but hoping to live stream today if you're watching this on Saturday. 
Uh, we'll see, though. Uh, with that being said, though, this is going to be the end of this video. We've been going for almost an hour. So, as always, until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching. And until next time, I'm out.